Hi, my name is Sarah Holbrook, and I want to introduce you to a um, classroom resource, Read, Write, Speak It, that I developed with my partner, Michael Salinger. And um, what I'd like to do right now, I'm going to share my screen and kind of walk you through how this works. So here we go. Uh, this product has been uh, in development for oh, over five years. And um, Michael and I are trade and professional book authors. And we have over 15 years experience working mostly in international schools with, um, with uh, English language learners really all over the world. And uh, this is a curriculum supplement to help English language learners and also all students who need support in acquiring academic English. One of the reasons we've been working so hard to bring this, uh, to make it available for teachers, is that it is adaptable for remote instruction and no one knows where we're going to be uh, this fall. But we want this to be available for teachers as they try to reach their kids, whether they're in the classroom or in the classroom part time or are uh, trying to teach from home. And uh, we've developed this consistent lesson process to help kids with their reading and speaking fluency, as well as their phonemic awareness. Uh, all of our lessons go back to the same um, goal and that is we want to help kids with their overall communication skills uh, and at the same time we want to build their academic vocabulary and their knowledge of idioms help them master those essential literary elements that travel across genres and grammar conventions well, a heavy emphasis is building confidence in the student, confident in their communication capabilities and with their um, uh, uh, ability really to express themselves. Because we know a confident student will join in discussions, will ask questions, will let the teacher know uh, when something's bothering them. And so that that developing of speaking confidence is very important to all of our lessons. We also have built in a family involvement component as well as social emotional learning. So um, let me get past this slide. We are English language speakers and uh, we, we feel it's part of our responsibility and our joy to put out the welcome mat for students who want to learn English and say, um, uh, we want to help you and come in, you're welcome. Uh, our goal is to bring all English learners into the conversation, enabling them to understand and be understood. And in putting our goal together, we reflected on a poem by Langston Hughes called Motto. And he says, my motto as I live and learn is to dig and be dug in return. And that's what we want for kids. We want them to understand the world around them and to be able to be understood in the world. Um, our resource has seven English language proficiency levels and uh, 28 lessons per level. And those are broken down into five 15 minute workshops, one for each day of the week. And um, we integrate reading, writing, and speaking into every lesson. So we're not teaching a reading workshop over here, writing workshop over here, and um, one speech at the end of the year that gives everyone hives. Um, we want to develop a culture of conversation in the classroom. And uh, so all of our lessons address both reading, all three, reading, writing, speaking, and of course, listening. Uh, each um, week's lessons includes two pieces of mentor text. One is a poem and one is a piece of prose. Uh, the poem is to engage the students in repeated reading, and the um, prose is uh, used to teach the same language lesson as the poem. And 
Every week has a targeted literary device or grammar convention. So we may be teaching adjectives, rising, falling action, prepositional phrases, and both the poem and the prose measure text will both address that same, um, uh, that same literary, essential literary element. Um, we do provide vocabulary and idiom support, uh, our journaling. We have a share sheet that goes home to families every week. And at the end of the week, we have an audio or video challenge. We received a wonderful endorsement from our friend, uh, Pam Ryan. Um, and she, uh, now, I know her uh, through her work, uh, Esperanza Rising, and the fact that she is a National Book Award finalist. What I didn't realize, and I've known Pam for over 20 years, is that she also has an MED and is a former bilingual teacher. And what she really liked about our program is that it gives students support um, for seven years. Uh, research tells us it takes seven years for a student to master a new language. Um, Michael and I come to this as authors and writers. Uh, we all, both have books for children, for young children, for teens, adults. We both have poetry books published by universities. We have won awards. Uh, Michael's uh, book, Well Defined, won a Voya Award. Uh, my novel, The Enemy, is historical fiction that won the 2018 um, Jane Addams Peace Prize. And I mentioned that to let you know that we come not as PhD educators and not as English language specialists. Uh, we come to this as writers and we really dissected our writing process uh, to come up with our lesson process. We are also the authors of five professional books in addition to this new teacher resource. The way the levels break down are we have three primary levels. So the students, um, and these could be run in a typical classroom, grades one through three. <clears throat> but we also, um, say you have a student who is a newcomer to English who comes in at the third grade level, that student might begin on primary level one. And that is pretty, um, pretty simple when we're just talking about the primary grades. But where it gets trickier is when we get up into intermediate and middle. Because we know we get newcomers to English who come in um, at the age of 12 or 13. And we, of course, do not want to start those students with primary level text. And we've all heard horror stories about people coming to the um, newcomers to English who are in middle grades and they start them off with nursery rhymes um, or singing um, Old MacDonald. And that's just insulting to them. The students come with a lot of background knowledge already and we wanna tap into that and uh, bring them into the conversation. The, part of the reason we include poetry is we know that invites rereading. And research tells us that rereading leads to fluency. And um, I want to reread this paragraph in my science book six times, said no kid ever, right? So, but they will reread a poem. Uh, they will be more curious about the word meanings if they know that they are going to be performing it. Uh, we got that out of um, Tim Brzezinski's research. And he said, if the text is short, kids are more interested in the word meaning particularly if they're going to be performing it aloud. We knew our prose mentor text had to be sharp and focused. We did not want any kind of cognitive overload for the student. We want them to stay engaged and for every student to find some level of success. Uh, we made all of our, our slides that I'm going to show you hopefully are lively and have fun illustrations that engage kids. We really see this as, a, as where a trade book crosses with a professional book. And uh, we offer multiple opportunities every week for students to speak. We were in uh, Los Fresnos, Texas last year, Michael and I were, and we were doing professional development, back to school PD, you know. And uh, 
we said to the teachers down there, now they have 85% English language learners. And we said to them, you know, we've been working on this thing. Would you maybe want to try it? Now we knew our lessons worked if we were in the classroom. The question was, if we turn it over to um, a classroom teacher, would they find success? And they said, sure, we'll try it in a couple classes. as well. The teachers got to talking in the teacher's lounge and before we knew it, it was in 50 classrooms. And uh, although in Texas they did not take the STAR test this year because of COVID, they did take what's known as the TELPIS test. And that is the special test that is for English language learners. We don't have data yet. We are supposed to have data uh, around the middle of July. And we're very interested because we will have comparative data because some classes were using the resource and some were not. Um, so I'm going to show you a lesson out of the primary level four, uh, uh, primary level two, and each level contains, um, comes with the following um, components, a spreadsheet of literary terms and grammar conventions, um, a slide deck that can be either used on a classroom smart board or it could be projected if you're using um, Google Meets or um, a Zoom to reach out to students and doing remote instruction. Um, it has a PDF of a family share sheet to be duplicated and sent home. And I'm going to be showing you this in a second. And of course, a lesson plan. So the first thing is that spreadsheet of literary terms and grammar conventions. So this is the one that comes with our primary level two. And we have arranged the poems alphabetically uh, according to um, the phonemic sound that is emphasized in that lesson. We don't expect any teacher to do this alphabetically. We expect them to look at the literary lessons and um, choose one that fits with what they're teaching. And we use, in order to come up with our literary lessons, we use the standards in Texas, um, the TEKS, and also the TELPAS standards. We worked with the uh, standards from Virginia, the SOLs, and the Common Core. Um, we found themes, and we went for the themes, like every student needs to learn about persuasive writing, what an, uh, what an action verb is, uh, uh, what character traits are as opposed to a plot summary. Uh, and you can see we have listed those and because we never teach these elements once, we always need to reinforce. We have a reinforceable lesson also that goes with everyone. And in the primary level, we have added a content area connection. So if you're teaching about seasons, uh, you might want to use the O poem. Um, oh no snow or if you're taught if you have a unit on recycling you might like recycling rodeo um, today I'm going to show you the lesson D drizzly day the literary lesson is adjectives and the secondary reinforceable lesson is visual language this would fit into a classroom perhaps if you were studying weather or the water cycle um, this would be your lesson plan for the week. Uh, most of them are a two-page spread. A few of them, the poems are longer, so part of it has been kicked to a third page, but it's pretty easily digestible. And um, focus for just a minute on Tuesday, the vocabulary words. We advise to handle new vocabulary in a conversational way. So we want to give the teacher prompts on how um, how to get kids up and acting out the words. We could draw pictures of the words. We might do a little bit of internet research. And so this word droopy, we would everybody droop, you know, or we could draw a picture of something drooping. And um, what we've done is pick just a few, um, what we think would be challenge words for students and identify those in the vocabulary uh, section. But uh, again, these are to help teachers get started, not to hold them back. If there are more target words, then of course, we would want them to adapt to the students' needs. Um, on Monday, the way the mini workshops work throughout the week is on Monday, we read the poem, we reread it, 
and um, talk a little bit about what is the poem about and about fin and we're going to focus on phonemic awareness for a certain sound. The reason we have 28 lessons is we have one for each letter of the alphabet and one for the SH and TH digraphs. Um, Tuesday, we're, that's we're going to talk about vocabulary. The family share sheet goes home. Wednesday, we do a social emotional journal entry. On Thursday, we bring in our prose mentor tax and the students will uh, write to evidence their understanding of the literary element that's being taught. And on Friday, this was when we piloted, this was the kids' favorite day, because this was the day we did our audio or video recording and sharing. So on Monday, here would be the slide. You could be um, showing this on your smart board or, uh, or you could show it on, um, uh, if you were doing virtual remote teaching. And we advise that the teacher read the poem um, once and then have the students read it with her or him and then maybe do something, depending on the poem, something fun like this side of the room, read um, the first half, this side of the room, read the other half, but we're going to engage in repeated reading. On um, Monday has two slides. The second slide highlights that targeted phenome that we're working on. So this, in this case, it's the D sound. And uh, this is teacher choice. Some students are going to need this support. Other students, if you're, they're in a typical classroom, may not need this support. Uh, but we, ha we have it in there. Also embedded in this slide, Drizzly Day is a recording. Droopy, drippy, drizzly, dark. No sunny skies. So that the student, this is to practice their listening skills and the student will hear a native speaker and, the, and also the author read the poem to kind of hear the intonation. Um, on Tuesday, we're going to go back, reread the poem. And on um, Tuesday is our vocabulary day. So you can see we have highlighted the vocabulary words and we talked about that a little bit when I showed you the lesson plan. And also on Tuesday, that is when, and that's for 15 minutes, we're gonna talk about the vocabulary. And then we have a slide for our family share sheet. This also is a PDF that can be run off. And these will go home with the students. And this is their only homework for the week, uh, but they are to read this out loud to another human being. Uh, it could be a big brother, could be grandma, could be mom or dad. And we have a couple of discussion questions here. So um, uh, or one discussion question, I should say, and one public speaking tip. So um, you should know that these discussion ideas are currently being translated. So we will have these available in Spanish and Mandarin. And, um, uh, and then we're hoping to build our, um, our banks and do a little crowdsourcing to get to um, uh, other languages such as Sudanese or Haitian Creole or other, some of the other foreign languages that are spoken um, with our newcomers, um, among our newcomers. On Wednesday, we do a social emotional journal entry and uh, we always give kids a couple of prompts. We don't want to just leave them hanging and say, make a personal connection. Uh, but we, again, we tell kids this is to get them started, not to hold them back. So if neither one of these appeal to them, they can make their own personal connection or even draw a picture and put a caption under it. They're just, um, we just want them to connect with the text. Uh, Thursday, we're going to get down to business with the language lesson. And this week's language lesson would be adjectives. And there are adjectives in the poem, droopy, drippy, drizzly. And also in our mentor text. Now, Mike and I worked very hard to make these mentor texts um, sharp and focused. Um, and so the lesson plan would guide the teacher. We would share the sample mentor text with the students. And the next step is the teacher writes with the students um, to write a few sentences using adjectives. And then in a 
typical classroom situation, which we aren't in a typical time right now, um, we would pair the students to do some low risk writing where they can talk to their partner and find just the right words um, to write a short piece of prose. Uh, if we were teaching online, uh, we can put kids into small uh, groups outside um, into small breakout rooms. Um, or this could go home as a package and the student could work with the parent to write this simple piece of text. On Friday is when we do our recording and we heard from the kids in Los Fresnos this was their favorite day. And uh, teachers were doing all kinds of creative things. One teacher set up a recording booth in the back of her room uh, with an iPad and the kids rehearsed like mad to go back to do their recording. And um, see, we don't call it repeated reading, we call it rehearsal. And then it sounds a lot less dreary for kids. And, um, and then others were using flip grids. One teacher had QR codes around the poems and around the um, performances. She put them up on the wall. The kids could hold their iPads up and watch one another perform. And this really inspired kids to practice and get it right, and um, which is what we want to do. We want to engage kids in repeated reading for their reading fluency and their speaking fluency. So um, this is a lesson out of intermediate level two. So think um, uh, fifth grade. And uh, so here is the poem. And uh, we want to extend the social emotional learning even beyond the journaling. So um, here is out of the um, the lesson plan, le lesson plan, and you can see these are our challenge words that we're going to address. And then at the bottom, we suggest discuss what these words have in common. They are all about being different, and how that is a good and lovable thing to be. So we want to we want to engage them in conversation at every stage of this lesson. Um, so I'm going to show you just a, a, like one or two from different levels and you can see how they get more sophisticated as they go. Um, this is primary level one, so kids new to reading. And the language lesson here is the prefix RE. And uh, again, we would read this this sample text um, to students and then the teacher would co-construct one using the um, re prefix and then the students would go on to write their own. Um, here is out of primary level two is a jump rope rhyme and the lesson in this uh, that goes with this is about alliteration. Uh, think second grade. Now we like to show kids in their writing um, a, a little bit about the writing process. So we're going to begin by choosing a topic. What are some alliteration ideas? Sizzle, spit, crisp, cold. And then they will incorporate that into a little piece of prose. And we always call our initial writing version one. We use the word draft as a verb because we want to build into kids the expectation right from the beginning that this is an evolving document. And that jump from rough draft to finished draft is a big leap for striving students. So we want to instead begin with version one and then we're going to revise to add um, complexity and, and sophistication to their writing. So here we have primary level three. Um, again, we try to have age appropriate, engaging art for kids. Uh, you only have to read the first couple lines of this poem to figure out what the literary lesson is, hanging like a tree fruit, beeping like a smoke detector. Um, it is figurative language, simile. Um, but we don't just say to kids, write a couple similes. We uh, are walking them through the process. What is the topic? Um, fire truck. What are some details about a fire truck? Now turn a couple of those details into a simile. And then the teacher has the choice. Do we want to take this version one and put it in a more complex um, uh, uh, piece of writing? Or do we just want to leave it as a formative assessment 
um, to let the teacher know that um, whether the the kids have um, uh, uh, understand this concept. Um, now, here's where we get up into the tricky area. This is intermediate, middle, level one. So this would it could be a typical fourth grader, or it could be one of those. Um, kids who are 12, 13, 14 years old who have arrived in the country speaking no English. And we want artwork and we want text that honors um, who they are, uh, the background experience that they bring to the classroom. And um, so this lesson has pretty simple text, but it's, it's, more, it's more sophisticated. And uh, the picture of our journal changes at this grade level. We no longer have that primary journal where the writing paper has room for the picture. And, um, and our prompts are a little bit, um, have more layers in them. Like, have you ever had an experience involving fire? Describe, we want them to write for four or five minutes. Or what fires you up? Um, so we're gonna look at that word fire from a couple of different ways. Uh, the um, slide that shows the language lesson changes, and here the lesson is alliteration, but you will see our mentor text is very short and focused. Uh, we don't want anyone putting their head down on the desk and saying, this is too hard, I can't do that. We don't want kids to check out. We want them to stay engaged. Here is intermediate middle level two, so think about fifth grade. Um, we tried to work from your universal themes and that um, kids from all cultures uh, could um, find an interest in. We found this to be a universal theme. Uh, most or, or kids uh, don't like mosquitoes, so that's a universal. We've traveled all over the world. <laughs> We've actually taught in over 70 international schools in 52 different countries over the last 15 years. So here the um, quick write lesson is first person point of view. Um, so we're really gonna look at those first person um, present tense pronouns. And then what we, the way we look at it is when we do these um, focused lessons on uh, literary elements, it's a little bit like going to basketball practice and you practice free shots over and over and over again. So that when you're in the game, um, you, you have that muscle memory and um, uh, we, this then can also serve as a touchstone for, stu for teachers as they're coaching kids in their other writing and say, remember when we did that lesson on alliteration or remember when we did that lesson on similes, you might want to use one of those as you, re as you revise um, a more complex piece of writing. Here's intermediate middle level three. So think sixth grade. Um, we worked with this artist, Scott Pickering, and he's, he's, a, he's a bit of a, a nut, <laughs> and he will paint on anything. So I actually wrote this poem to go with the, um, with the um, picture that he had painted on a, on a puzzle. And a quick look at it, you can probably guess what the language lesson here is, it's synonyms. And um, we find kids misuse the sources all the time. So we're using this also as a, um, as a way to uh, reinforce the fact that you don't just go to the thesaurus unless you also look the word up in the dictionary and make sure you know what it is. You can see our writing process here, choose an emotion, what are some synonyms, and then write some text using those synonyms. Um, here, again, we're in about sixth grade here, and you can see the artwork is more sophisticated. It's a, this poem has a little bit more depth. Um, and the language lesson here is personification. Um, we, uh, I think I said before, we found the same themes in, in the standards that go state to state, and even in the international baccalaureate standards. Um, so our writing process here is we choose an emotion, what are some actions, and can we then include those in the, um, in the text. This would be intermediate middle level four. And um, 
whenever we have this in, uh, in a class and Michael reads it, and uh, we'll ask the kids if they can make a personal connection. Have they ever put off their homework till Sunday night? And you ask a sixth grader, well, like what time Sunday night? And a sixth grader will say, I am like seven, eight o'clock. Um, you ask a ninth or 10th grader, they're going to tell you 11. And, and that's where they start. So they, they're easily able to make a personal connection. The language lesson in this poem is prepositional phrases. And um, so we give the students, um, uh, a lot of times with this one, we like to start with an image. And we can either use a simple image, the scene outside the window, we could find an image on um, the internet, uh, bring a family photo from home to describe with prepositional phrases. Um, or one time we were working in a classroom um, we try to tie into what uh, students are, are working on in class and we were in a class and they were reading out of the dust and um, so uh, we all went on the internet we found images of the dust bowl and we wrote um, a series of prepositional phrases about that and then we put those prepositional phrases into a piece of text and um, uh, this one is from Intermediate Level 4, and um, it has in it a rhetorical question. So you can see rhetorical questions are not something that is required um, or, or even suggested for our primary friends. But um, when we're up in this grade level, um, we know that even if kids are just learning English, they have to learn these literary terms uh, to, re to maintain grade level. So we want to, um, uh, we, we're not dumbing down these lessons. Uh, we're, we wanna keep the kids at grade level, but we want to support them in their English learning. Um, we have found that EL students are eager learners. They really want to learn. And unfortunately, sometimes the system just squashes them. And uh, by telling them that they're not good enough. Um, and what we've heard from EL teachers is they're kind of tired of people bringing products to them where it says this will help all kids with their reading. And as a footnote, it says, by the way, it will help EL kids. So we've kind of turned that upside down. And then we designed this for EL kids. And by the way, it will help all kids um, support them in acquiring academic English. Up in the corner there, you see Michael. He's pictured with a, a classroom of students in Brazil. I think that those kids in that classroom, they, sp they spoke 15 different languages. And um, we've been working in these classrooms for the last 15 years. And you walk in, you never know what the kids' English language level is going to be. And we have developed our lesson process uh, uh, based on the needs of, of, of the students that we meet all the time. Uh, now, I know, um, Different states have different names for this, but we often classify our, or um, I hate the word label, but uh, uh, our English language learners uh, at one of three levels, or some states even use four levels, um, newcomer, intermediate, and almost proficient. But we definitely know and have heard from teachers that this will support um, uh, students in acquiring academic English. Um, um, who are native speakers. We also offer professional development. We recommend if a school is, purchases this, that we would do a um, Zoom session to introduce the product to them. And uh, then we could offer ongoing support if they need it. Uh, we also do have done uh, a lot of classroom visits and coaching. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're doing everything virtually, um, as most of the world is. Uh, so we would welcome the opportunity to talk to you more about our product. And I'm going to stop here. And Michael's going to pick up with a second video and show you how the, uh, how the website works. So thank you very much. 
There we go. Yeah. 